How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Well, it is time for another build and it involves this. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the channel everybody so glad each and every single one of you can make it i picked this up at the pig hunt of a different kind of store that i go to and i don't know i really didn't need it but i always see people with cool dioramas and stuff and i was like you know what would i put on this thing because it's not 164 scale and i'm trying not to mess anything up when i open it but it is not 164 scale as you can tell by the tire tracks but it happened to fit the scout car that I made, which I thought was very, very cool. Now I plan on doing a few other things to this, like adding some, maybe adding some foliage, a bush or a fallen tree or something like that. You know, find a dead, little dead tip of a tree that, or a branch that I could use to put on here and make it look like a fallen tree next to the rocks or something, you know. But anyhow. I just got to thinking that there's room for one more car. I would love to find me a motorcycle and a sidecar. And, or if somebody could 3D print me a sidecar, I could, I could use a motorcycle that I already have, like a dirt bike. But anyhow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into that. But that would be super cool as well. But with that being stated, I figured that this scout car, even though scout cars are normally by themselves, once they find something or they're traveling from one long destination um, base camp to another, you know, they ride together. And the reason they normally ride separate, of course, is to give less, fewer targets. But yes, the plan is, is to make another car for this. And I'm going to just slide it over to the side for a second. And I've been kind of gathering bits and pieces. And it, this all started where Mr. Brummett had me do a car for him. He sent the car and the car that had the wheels. And you'll recognize the car instantly. Yep, it's the Ecto-1. So I took the wheels off of it and I had this casting and I was like, I want to do something with this bad boy. And if you take it apart, it's really cool. I don't know how much of it will stay or anything, but I figured this needs to be on that. And I have the lights to go on the inside let me get everything out real quick while i talk to you i have the lights and everything to go on the inside of it i don't have the the roof rack because derek up at unstockcast wanted that for a build that he said he was going to do whether he really does it or gets around to it is not my problem that's that's he said he needed it and i had it so i sent it to him so the only thing moving missing from this is the roof rack which I don't need anyway. I don't even need lights, to be honest. So the plan is, is I'm going, I'm going to show you what, what direction I'm going in. I'm going to be removing the lights. I, at first, I thought that I was going to stick build, like a harpoon gun to go on top of it. And I may do another one in the future and do that. But I, I don't think I'm going to go that route with this. I may change my mind. This is like this was like that. I had a bunch of bits and pieces and it took me months to figure out what direction I wanted to go. But with that being stated, <clears throat> I'll probably take the lights off. I'll probably put some JB Weld up here to flatten all this back out. Make it smooth again. Because I have some bits and pieces. Mr. Brummett sent me a couple 4x4 bases. And I'm actually going to use the bedazzled one. Of course, I'll probably repaint it a different color because, you know, if you're trying to hide out in wasteland and everything, those sparkles will give away your position easily. But I have several of these. And this one just happens to be the right wheelbase for this car. Look at that. It just happens to be the right wheelbase. So now i got them. Make it to where it will fit flat on the base. Because what it's doing is it's... This cross member right here is hitting right in here. So I need to take just a little bit out of that out so it'll sit flat. 
and then same back here on these sides because it's hitting right there and that base will sit absolutely flat so then all i gotta do is mount it to the the body but look at that stance already and then to give the overemphasized gas lens type of man max feel i have one of these off of a junked mustang that i had so i figured i would smooth that down and just super glue it on there i'm not looking to make it look like a real build or anything and then off of the same build of the same car I had these side pipes so to accentuate the body uh, i don't think this is the right one for this side but you'll get the idea when i stick it up here to accentuate the, the goofiness of this build those will go right there so you've got that you've got that you've got the engine yeah, something may change between now and then. I don't know. But because I, I had that engine that I was working with, and I, you know, I've got some 3D printed engines, but I didn't want to go that far. And I had this, this one, but when I put it up there, that's just too small. I mean, it looks in scale, but it's, it, it just looks too small for the overall huge build of the 4x4 I'm going with. So I figured I'd do that. And then I have this front cattle catcher if you will that i'm going to put on it raise it up and mount it something like that and then you got to have a gun and i figure what a cool what a better cool gun than a a dual turret gun and that will sit on the new flattened roof and i don't know if i'm gonna use this space what i thought about doing is drilling up in there even more probably almost all the way up to here and letting a, a uh, piano wire or piece of brass rod or something come out just enough for it to sit on and actually spin freely. I mean, this base, it'll spin on it, but it's been 3D printed and everything. After you spin it a couple of times, it gets kind of loose, you know. But that is the plan for now. I may end up using that. I don't know. We'll see how it goes when I get there. But that's the plan. That's the look that I'm going for. Let me get you down and show you. Doesn't that look super cool? That will look really good on there. And like I said, I don't know. I may, I may try to find a couple dead limbs and stuff out in the yard that has fallen over the years that has a cool tip on it that I could cut off and you know, either drill a hole or glue it on here or whatever. Stand it up like you know, dead tree in the wastelands. Or like a fall, fell over, you know, to go along with the dead skeleton for the dinosaur and whatnot. But that is the idea. So, with that being stated, let's get to building this because there's not going to be a lot to it. I've got the the most time and time consuming part is going to be filling this roof with JB Weld, and then I'm going to paint it. It's not going to stay this color. You'll probably still see most of the ecto on there, but. The rest of it will probably be a different color. And you'll probably see the ecto on back. Just for that vibe. Because there's no logo on that. <laughs> so you'll probably see most of it. I don't know. I'm going to try to do it. I'll probably use the same paint method I did on that. On this. As far as using the dishwashing liquid. And just kind of brush it on there. And then kind of feather it out at the edges. Because I don't want the whole thing sticking there. I just want part of it. And yeah, so let's get to it. So here we are, zinc plating. What does that have to do with the ecto car? Nothing. I'm just outside enjoying the weather and we're gonna work on this. While I, I need to let this go for about 10 to 15 minutes. So while we let that go, I'm going to sand this. So let's get to it. This is going to be a lot of sanding, but I get, people have asked me why I didn't just do it from the inside. Well, again, this has a recessed area where the, the, the rack used to be on the top. So I want this top as smooth as, as flat as I can get it. I know I won't get it perfect with this. I'll have to use some spot glaze, but that's what I was going after. That's the reason that I did it the way that I did it. Yes, there's going to be a good bit of sanding, but I have a way around that. I'm going to see how hard it's going to be doing this by hand. And if it looks like it's going to be a 
paint, I have a palm sander with 80 grit on it. I'll throw that bad boy on here and see what we get. Let me get this tape off here and we'll go from there. Alright, let's see what we got here. I might shake you just a little bit. I'm just going to see how hard this is really going to be. Yeah, it's pretty tough. So I think I'm going to hit this with the palm sander. I'm going to work on this for just a minute and see what we get here. Yeah, that's going to take a minute. And through the magic of editing, look at that. Literally two minutes worth of time with the palm sander. That bad boy is flat. I'll go over it with the spot putty. Well, first I'm going to sand it with probably 150 or 320 to get rid of some of these rough spots. And then I'll coat the whole thing with the spot putty and sand it by hand because that stuff's a lot softer. But yeah, literally two minutes. Palm sander.